We started the pathway to power from the manger to the upper room. So we are right here now in the second to last sermon. Um, the, the, the point I'm going to make today is that many people want to have the upper room experience. But there is a prerequisite experience here, which I call a pre-Pentecost experience. And if you don't have this, you can't have that. That's the big idea. Some people want power. They want the anointing. They want uh, the gifts. But it's not going to work like that. It's like the young man who went to buy a car. He had the money. And he could buy the car cash. And so they asked him for his driver's license. He said, well, I don't have a driver's license. So the guy said, well, if you don't have... He pulled out his driver's license and said, if you don't have this, you can't get that. So that's where I'm going. If you don't have what I'm going to be talking about today you will not be able to have that Pentecost upper room experience. So follow me. Um, there's simply three positions of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Spirit with you, the Spirit in you, and the Spirit upon you. And we want the upon, but I'm going to dwell on the in. The meaning, and, and this is going to be so encouraging because some people are not aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit most times. They think they are alone. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father that he will give you another comforter. The word another there means, Greek and allos, one of the same kind, not a different one. That the comforter is going to send is not different from who Jesus is. And so he's assuring them that he will give the comforter that he may abide with you forever. Jesus said, I am temporarily walking on the earth. But the comforter I'm sending, he is going to be with you forever. I am. Could you say amen? Because the Holy Spirit is going to be with you forever. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. Praise the Lord. That comforter is described further, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither know him, but you know him. This is my text. For he dwelleth with you. The Greek word is pros, not en. And he shall be en, Greek en, in you. He is with you, and he shall be in you. Now there is great Strength in Greek prepositions. Uh, the, the simple preposition like to and from and by and off and with has great power in scripture. Amen. Even in English. So let me illustrate. We're talking about the pre-Pentecost experience. And my topic is, if you don't have this, you can't have that. All right. All right. So let's talk about the this. And next Sunday, we will talk about the that. So, thank you. I, I could get any help today? Um, yeah. Hallelujah. So, l let me share the strength of prepositions. There is a pool, a swimming pool, and somebody drowned in it, died. So, the investigator is talking to you. He wants to know where you were. So he's going to ask you a question like this and see if that have any differences in meaning. Were you going to the pool? Were you coming from the pool? Does that say differently? He wants to know where. Were you standing by the pool? Were you in the pool? You see, these prepositions have power. And they tell us the action and the position. And so I'm going to ask you the question. Are you in the spirit? Are you with the spirit? Is your baptism of the spirit? What position do you play and understand with the spirit? Here we are talking about two positions today. The spirit with you and the spirit in you. Hallelujah. 
Now, what I'm going to be talking today about is for your character. Next week is for your ministry. And people confuse character with ministry. But if you don't have character, you will never have a powerful ministry. And I will show you in Matthew uh, how Jesus uh, condemned those who had great ministry, casting out devils and doing all kind of wonderful things. But he will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because they didn't have this. They only had that. And I am saying you have to have this. And what am I talking about? The sevenfold manifestation of the Holy Spirit in you. This word should be uh, to encourage you because you know who lives in you. When God gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit, he didn't give you half of a spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. And when God gave you the gift of the Holy Ghost, he gave you a whole person. You have the whole Holy Spirit in you. You don't get pieces of the Holy Spirit. You don't come up here to get a little bit of this and a little bit of Holy Spirit. No, no, no. He is a person. I want you to be conscious that the person of the Holy Spirit is living in you. What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the living God? And he dwells in you and you belong to him? Yeah, what, don't you know that? I hope you know that. I hope you know that your body is the temple of the living God. I hope you know that God is dwelling in you and he wants to stay not just a resident, but president. He wants to be president of your life, not just a visitor. Not just come and check you out on a Sunday morning, give you some goosebumps, and you feel okay. It's more than that. It's the fullness of the Holy Ghost dwelling in the believer. You must have this before you have that. This is to encourage you and to remind you that when you have the Holy Spirit, you have to listen to what this statement is. When you have the Holy Spirit living in you, abiding in you, dwelling in you, you can look at the world and testify, greater is he that is in me than everything that surrounds me. you got to know that. You've got to know the greatness of the power that dwells in you. If you don't know this, you will never know that. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus is saying to them, the Holy Spirit is with you. The word with in Greek, you can check it. It's simple. Pros, P-R-O-S. It always means alongside. If I say my wife is walking with me, what am I telling you? She is by my side. Uh, she's not inside of me. She's not behind me. She is walking by my side. Here is the comfort you need to know. The word parakletos is a Greek word that pictures a courtroom scene. And Jesus is saying, the comforter, the advocate that I'm going to send to you is heaven's attorney. And he will defend you at all times. Why? Because the accuser of the brethren will keep pointing fingers at you, reminding you of your past, reminding you of your failures. But the Holy Spirit who is with you, he will stand as your attorney and tell the devil he's a liar. He will lost in court and you are a winner. Hallelujah. Oh, you have heaven's legal defense on your side. Praise his holy name. So, when the accused of the brethren comes, you have a defender. Spirit is with you. I uh, like how Billy Graham illustrated it. This could take me to my next point. Billy Graham said, when I go to work, I take my lunch with me. But come lunchtime, my lunch is in me. You understand that? So this is what Jesus says saying. The same spirit that is with you, he shall also be in you. 
And if you do not have the spirit in you, you are none of his. You don't belong to the Lord unless the spirit is in you. I have several scriptures to quote. I don't want to uh, get into all of them. But let me just, uh, there are seven things that um, the spirit of truth, the spirit of adoption, the spirit of intercession, the spirit of life, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of power, and the spirit of glory. This sevenfold manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in you. You are not a weak person. You have more power in you than you understand. And the thing is, we are not activating it. It's like you get a credit card with $5,000 on it. And you, you, they say, hey, take this credit card. But you didn't read the little thing in the back said, you have to call this number and activate it. And so the Lord has given to you, but we need to activate everything that God has given unto us. And when we activate, we can dominate. Then we can live above the world and live above the circumstances that come around us to destroy our peace of mind. Can I hear somebody say amen? The spirit in you. John 15, 26 says, But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. So, when you have the spirit of truth, error will not dominate your life. Because the spirit of truth in you will fight the spirit of error. So, he's guaranteeing and guarding against the errors that will come into your mind and into your life. Romans 8.15 and Galatians 4.6. Romans 8.15 says... But you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The same Holy Spirit becomes the confirming agent that you are a son or a daughter of God. And so when that spirit dwells in you, you have the assurance and you can cry, Abba, you can say, God is my father. You are his child. You need to have that confidence that whenever a son asks the father anything in Jesus' name, you shall have it. Do you see how much you have? Romans 8, 27 says, we know not how we ought to pray, but the Spirit prays in us according to the will of the Father. Oh, the Spirit of intercession. There are times I don't know what to say. There are times when I don't know how to pray. I don't know what is right from what is wrong sometime in asking. But when I begin to pray in the Spirit, when the Holy Ghost comes upon me, and I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and in tongues, the Holy Spirit takes over, and He begins to pray inside of me according to the mind of the Father, according to the will of God. I have somebody in me who prays to the Father according to the will of God. So my prayer is right and my prayer will be answered because the Holy Ghost inside of me is praying. You have the spirit of intercession. Romans 8 2 says for you have not received the spirit of uh, of death. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus. Had set me free from the law of death and sin. There are two operating laws in me. What is the spirit of life and what is the spirit of death? And I have the spirit of life that will conquer and overcome any deadness inside of my spirit. Why? Because life is greater than death. 
Because life has more power. Death may take you in the grave, but life will take you out of the grave. Hallelujah. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Let me show you how Jesus is the greater. We don't say greatest because that, that's not good. You, you can only compare him with, with, with someone or something. He is the greater. Because he said so. Greater is he. Greater is he. Not the greatest. Greater is he. So you are the traffic light. It's red. By law, you have to stop. There's a cop in the intersection. And he looks at you and, and pulls you through. And you're watching the red light? And you're watching the cop? Who should you obey? Who would you obey? You have to over the, obey the cop. Why? Because he has the authority to override the law of the red light. And it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. He has the power to override any law of sin and death against you. He that is led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. Oh, you have so much. So much in you. Romans 1.4. Romans 1.4. Concerning Jesus Christ, O Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by which he was raised from the dead, by whom also you will receive the grace and, and, and the calling of God. The spirit of holiness Amen. is what raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Yeah. You have that spirit. Now, you don't have to fight to be holy and wrestle to be holy. If you yield to the dwelling of the Holy Spirit, if you yield to that holiness inside of you, holiness will manifest because you didn't get parts of the Holy Spirit. You have the whole Holy Spirit in you. Spirit of holiness. Second Timothy 1.7, 1 Corinthians 2.4, Romans 15.19. All say the same thing. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the power. The spirit of power. The spirit of. The spirit of love. And the what? A sound mind. What you have received. The spirit of power, so you're not a weakling. The spirit of love, so you can overcome any hate that people toss at you. And the spirit of a sound mind, that you can reason with God and come to a good conclusion. Oh, you have so much. <laughs> Second Corinthians 2.18 says, By the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, you are changed from glory to glory to glory. There's an ever-changing level of glory in the believer's life. And so that today you may look this way, but tomorrow you can look different. Don't judge people by how you see them today. They are ever-changing from one level of glory to another level of glory. Just, in, just encourage somebody. They may not be on your level, but they are growing. They are growing. They are growing from glory to glory. And don't condemn people because they're not up to your level. Amen. Let me illustrate. You know about mangoes, right? You know, I think everybody knows a mango, a mango tree. Because if you don't know, I'll tell you about an apple. But when you see the, the, the mango branch, it begins to flower. There's a nice little red flower there. Is that a mango? So when you see a young Christian budding with the flower of the Holy Spirit and he has a little bit of Jesus showing, what are you going to say? Uh, look at that. You know, Christian, you cannot pass judgment on young believers. You've got to give them time to grow. Two weeks.
weeks later you, later, you see a little mango like that. It's changing from one level of glory to another level of glory. It's a little mango and you don't want that. Hey, you are too little. That's not what I want. It's none of your business. What other people are going through, let them grow with God. Hallelujah. One month later, the mango is this big. Ah, it's looking good, but it's green. It's gone to another level. If you have a little patience, you will see that thing turn red. And it will be ready to eat, hallelujah, from glory to glory. And in every level of glory, that mango is perfect. It's growing in perfection. It's growing from one glory to another glory. Hallelujah. Leave people alone. Encourage them. Because you don't know what level they are with God. That's the spirit in you. You have so much in you. The spirit of truth. Spirit of adoption. The spirit of intercession. Spirit of life. Spirit of holiness. Spirit of power. And spirit of glory. But you want, do not miss. You want, you have exousia, which is the right and privilege to become a son of God. That's what the, the Greek word is. For as many as receive him, to them he give the exousia, or the rights, the authority and privilege to become a son of God. But I will show you next week when Jesus will say to the disciples, go into the upper room. After he had breathed into them the Holy Ghost, he said to these same people, go into the upper room. And tarry until you be endued with power from on high. That is not this. And this, what I just spoke to you, is not that. You cannot have that until you have this. Amen. I'm done, you know. The last thing is ministry, which everybody wants without character, is a disaster. Too many good preachers, too many good speakers, too many motivational talks, but you don't know their private lives. And some of them are really messing up privately. Um, I can't call names, but if you read the news several times, the church in Australia that hugged the world and blessed the world, these leaders were so awesome. Until the church split. Until they found the pastor. And the several, five of the ministers. Pedophilias. All kind of horrible things. While the church was giving the impression. The world was rushing after Hillsong. Thank God for Darlene Sheck. She stayed. Probably the only one. But read. What I, why I'm saying that. Is that we judge TV people on what we see. But not what we know. Because we don't know them. We don't know them. I'm not against preachers. God bless preachers everywhere. God bless uh, TBN and all the channels that are sending the gospel message. However, they have sent a wrong message to the third world. The third world now believes that all your furniture must look golden. And that you, you must have everything Way up. Listen, their church is so big in Africa, they can't have a building to seat them. They are out in the open. You, in South America, in Indonesia, they're baptizing 25,000 people on one day. Come on. We don't need a facility here. We need the power of God. We need an open church without walls. That is the power of God. And so ministry have its place. And there are some wonderful people doing wonderful ministry. But listen to this group and I will close. The disaster of ministry without character. Matthew 7. Jesus is talking. Verse 21. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, right. shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. Now, if I had made this up, you could blame me. But Jesus himself, but he that doeth the will of my Father, doing the will, 
is, is extremely important. Because he said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them and say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You calling these miracle workers and prophets workers of iniquity? No character. I never knew you. The word knew there is the same word that used in, in, in Genesis 4 when Adam knew his wife. Intimate relationship. You have to have intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit who produces a living, intimate Christ in your heart. So that the Holy Spirit takes the nature of Jesus and develops that inside of you and make you more Christ-like. You want a pre-Pentecost experience before you have that. So the topic is you can't have that until you have this i want you to recognize you have it you have the holy spirit open up release release him watch my knee illustrated it so a well, long time ago he said to take a seed if you put that seed on the shelf nothing will happen to you you have to put it in the ground it has to be buried and gone out of sight. It has to lose its outward shell. And when darkness has walked upon it, it will bust and bring forth what was in the seed. And so there are times when the Lord is burying you in, in some unknown place. In some dark corner where you are alone and only you know what's going on. And you wonder why you were buried and why you were out of sight. And why nobody's calling you and why nobody's encouraging you. You have been uh, buried, somebody said. They threw dirt on me. They kept on throwing dirt on me. And they didn't know that I was a seed. And I blossomed out of the dirt. And I have become a fruitful branch. Hallelujah. Oh, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let Christ dwell in you richly. You can't have that until you have this. God bless you.